upgrade and it's time you start editing in 4K. It's 2017 and 4K is getting old already. It's going to be 6K, 8K, 12K and God knows what else in the future. So let's dump that six year old laptop or PC that you're using right now and let's look to an upgrade. Title of this video is best laptop for 4K editing. But here's the thing. If you really want to do 4K editing right now, the easiest and the cheapest way to get into it is to forget buying a laptop altogether. And um, if you've got the technical know-how, buying it off the shelf and putting it together yourself is by far the most cost-effective way of putting together a beast of a system. If you don't have the know-how, many companies these days will build it for you and it's still going to be quite a bit cheaper than if you were to try and buy a laptop to do the same job. So advice number one, the best laptop in 2017 for editing 4K is none of them particularly. Get yourself a good home PC. Having said that, if you simply have to have a laptop because you're traveling, you're on the go, you're on the move, and you want to edit in that 4K, get your Visa, get your black Amex cards, and get your Master cards out because you are about to blow a whole load of dough, and I'm going to tell you how. Let's begin. If you are already in the Apple ecosystem, just stick with it. You're going to flip to Windows, you're going to hate it, you're going to flip back, you're going to think the grass is greener on the other side, and it probably is not. So, honestly guys, if you're already in the Apple system, stick with it. If you're in the Apple system and you're using Adobe Premiere, by all means carry on, but if you switch to Final Cut in the Apple ecosystem, it's going to be quicker assuming that you can relearn the software of course but my little rule is that if you're going to be running adobe premiere stick with nvidia graphics and for sure if you're running final cut then you really want to be sticking with the graphics the radeon pros that is inside of these apple macs so it's not going to be cheap if you go down that particular route, but you can see here that there are even bigger and better options. If you want it custom built, you can indeed do that. You can configure to order a 3.1 quad core i7 with a Radeon Pro 560. Now that is that. There's nothing higher that you can go. Just blow your money. Do it because then you're not going to be wondering, oh, should I have brought the higher powered one? If you're going to be editing in 4K, you just go go all out, slap that money down, get the highest that you possibly can, and then you won't look back and think, damn, I should have spent the extra money when you're struggling and having to use proxy files. Nobody wants that. So Apple ecosystem, stick with it. Change to Final Cut, Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. Now, I would have advised this before I got one. This basically was the direct competition. Again, it's the 7700HQ. Come back to that HQ. Whatever laptop that you're looking at, whether it's this list or not try and stick to HQ if you're wanting it for 4k video editing if not if you're just browsing you can go for the U series but if it's really a workhorse go for the HQ so on paper I mean check this little beast out we've got 16 gig of memory and that's the lowest I would suggest get 32 if you can but it's not ever so easy 16 don't go any lower than that You've got the uh, the GeForce, which is good for Adobe Premiere. 
and you've got a 4K screen. I mean, come on, what more could you possibly want? And of course it's expensive, but it's not ludicrous at uh, £1,849. It's not completely crazy. Trouble is, I bought one. Of course I did. And I know some others that did, and I had no end of issues. So it was as much use as a chocolate teapot. And on that basis, I no longer recommend this, unfortunately. So where do you turn? Well, if you want to go down to Microsoft, you have the Microsoft Surface laptop, but they're only a U processor and they're big money. So I wouldn't really bother. I checked this puppy out, to be honest, 4K. And as far as the processor goes, again, 7700HQ, picking up on 16 gig of RAM and just all in some pretty nice specs. Again, it's not cheap. It's gonna set you back a pretty penny, but you want a 4K editing laptop, so you're gonna to need to be prepared to pay your monies. I'm probably going to pick this up, the 4K UHD. I'll let you know how I get on with it. Can't be any worse than the XPS 15 that I brought. Now, I've only covered these. Basically, get your checklist out. 7700HQ or above. 16 gig of memory or more. And... 1080 I would avoid yeah you can do it you can edit in 4k it's going to give you better battery but come on guys 2017 let's go for more than 1080 if at all possible I'm not saying you have to go all the way to 4k maybe found a little bit of middle ground there but if you can get the 4k screen on it you're going to be editing in 4k you may as well view it in 4K. Now, one little laptop, little sort of a um, curve ball, a wild card, if you will. But the Pixel, yes, it's a Chromebook. But if you get the Ludicrous, which has 16 gigs of RAM and an i7, you could potentially try and stick Windows, Mac or Linux on it and then you've got a lot of bang for the buck because at the moment you can pick one of them up for around 900 bucks. So there you go. If you are in the Apple ecosystem, buy a Mac, avoid the XPS 15 and treat yourself to this little puppy here, which is, as we scroll to the top, the new Razer Blade. And as usual guys, it's been expensively emotional.